Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're going to add Aquatech Booster Pump to the RODI system and see how much of a difference it really makes. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Teats. Now I've always been kind of curious about adding a booster pump to the system. And there's a few reasons you'll want to do this. Um, the main reason is it makes your filters more efficient at a higher pressure. Um, if you have too low of a pressure, you're not going to get nearly the efficiency that you should be. Um, the other big advantage is that it's going to make water faster. So if you're trying to fill up your tank, you're not waiting around nearly as long for water to fill. So I'm going to do a couple tests and kind of see how quick it goes to fill my, like a liter of water, you know, before pump and after pump, and we'll gauge it from there. So a few things I picked up. Um, I ordered this guy from Bulk Reef Supply, and this is an Aquatech CDP800 8800 booster pump, our auto flush flow restrictor, because I mean, if you're going to do this anyways, you might as well put in the auto fl flush. And there's a pressure switch, and this is what's going to turn the booster pump on and off as water flows through it. It's going to detect when that kind of flow valve is tripped to turn it off. And we got our little power transformer to power it all up. Now on mine, I also have an apex that controls a solenoid. So I think I'm going to program this to be on the kind of the same solenoid. I could probably leave it hooked up, but I'm just going to tell it turn on if the solenoid's on. So that would be kind of a good way to do it. Install should be fairly straightforward. Um, I've been kind of toying with the idea if I mount this to the wall or if I just let it kind of sit on top. I don't really know how loud it's going to be, how much vibration. So for now, I'm going to sit it on top with a little silicone kind of pot pad and that's just going to let it absorb the vibrations and I'll figure out the kind of future long-term mounting solution afterwards. Now just to be safe, I put in a brand new sediment filter and carbon filter, just flush the carbon filter, just to make sure we're getting kind of the maximum flow and potential out of our unit. Um, now at the top of it, I'm getting just shy of 60 psi. Now if I was at 40 to 50 psi, I would 100% for sure want a booster pump. Now because I'm right at 60, I'm kind of really borderline. Um, so I think adding is going to get me up to that 80 to 90 to kind of get the most kind of bang for my buck out of it. But so it really kind of depends where you're at. So I'm going to say if you're less than 50, you should really strongly consider getting one. If you're closer to 60 ish, you're kind of, you can go either way. So now with this one, it's been flushing for a few minutes. So now I'm going to time it and see how long it takes to fill a thousand mils of water. Get the booster pump installed and then we'll try it again and see kind of the difference that it's made. All right, so it's about two minutes and 47 seconds to do 1,000 mils of water. Um, so I guess it's a bit of a baseline, so just shy of three minutes. So let's get the booster pump installed and we'll test it again and we'll see where we're at. Now I turn my water off and I'm just gonna do my little flush line and make sure all the water is draining from the lion so we don't have any water spraying anywhere as we get stuff set up. Now if we look on this, you can see the direction of flow. So water comes in one side, not the other side. So we're gonna wanna make sure that we have the water flowing the correct way. Now for now we're going to set the booster pump just on top of this little silicone mat and we'll run a new chunk of hose to the RODI unit. So now that we got the booster pump installed, um, next we have to install our pressure switch. This is going to go in the product line. So it's going to be the output of it and we'll see if there's an arrow direction on this one. I don't believe there is. So our product line is going to be the one that comes out of the last canister and that's actually just on the back of this unit. Okay, so we've got our pressure switch installed, we'll reinstall our DI, and last but not least, we're going to install our auto flush. So this is the manual flush right now, so this is really going to replace that chunk. So I'm going to fish this wire out and we'll kind of tuck it in the back somewhere. So as we have our wastewater line out of here, it goes in through this little pressure valve and then to the drain. Now this little Y is in here because I put it in as my own kind of manual flush valve. Now we don't really need this, so we're going to install, remove this, and put the flush valve right in the middle of it. And you can kind of see inside of this is the little flow restrictor that was previously in there. Now the only step left is to connect the power back up to everything. Because the pressure switch is kind of going in the middle to turn the pump on and off, I'm going to wire that one directly up to the pump. Um, so this is kind of like a splitter, so that should be a switch turned on and off. And then we're going to have our power supply from the transformer, and one should go on the other side of this. And the other one will plug into our auto flush. Alright, so everything should now be wired up, so I'll get the canister back on, we'll test it. For the moment of truth, we'll turn the flow back on. 
Okay, so right now it's in my flush mode, so it's just flushing out all the TDS creep. And it is running around 90 PSI. So that's actually a pretty good place to be. So we'll turn that off. And we'll make sure the auto shut off works. Perfect. So auto shut off, everything's working perfectly. Now the true test is we're gonna try refilling that kind of container again, and we'll see how long that takes. A minute and 37 seconds. That is almost half the time to fill that same thousand mils of water. So it definitely creates a huge boost if you're filling up a new tank or you wanna refill those reservoirs, you can do it in you know just about half the time. So that's a pretty impressive boost. Um, I do know on some of these pumps, you can adjust it a little bit so you get a little more, a little less pressure out of it. Mine should be operating when it's running right around the 90 something PSI. So I think that's just about perfect for my setup. So I'm very excited for it. Now, it's also supposed to give you a lot more filter life. I don't really know exactly how I'm gonna test that. I guess it's kind of time will tell and I'll try and see if I notice I'm replacing them less. But just the fact that I can refill water, you know, I can refill my bins twice as fast as I can normally when I mix in salt water and everything else is gonna be awesome. That and extra filter life, it's a pretty big bonus. So it's a nice little upgrade, especially if you're, you know, kind of 55 or less PSI could be a pretty good upgrade. So something to consider. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. I'll catch you on next week's video.